broken. <laughs> Childhood of they told of a wondrous love pointed to the dying Savior. Now they dwell with him above. Will the circle be unbroken? By and by, Lord, by and by. Mother's Day. It's interesting when God wants to talk of Himself and His, His company, His compassion, look how He compares Himself. And Isaiah he says, as one whom His mother comforts, so I will comfort you. Isn't that interesting? God made ladies special to be moms and special as moms to be comforters and have compassion. And so that's the standard that, that, that God takes on Himself and shares. Every Mother's Day, it's kind of a limited number of topics that, that you talk about if you're going to honor that day. And so today, we're going to be talking about the first mom. And we get a lot as we learn about the first mom. We, we, we find out how high of esteem women had. People say, well, the church submits women and all that. The church wants all of us to submit to God. What do you call someone who submits to God? Someone who treats God like Lord. <laughs> what do you call somebody that doesn't submit to God? Rebellious and ungrateful. I mean, so submission is part of the thing. Uh, it, it, it's, most of you know, you're probably going to hear Romans 10, 9, and it talks about submission. Confess that Jesus is Lord. That means the one I submit to. It means I trust Him enough that even if I don't always understand or may not agree in my broken brain, I know He's right and I should follow Him. If you're on your way to heaven, you say, well, Jesus says go that way. But I kind of like the way it looks over there. It looks like a good fishing hole over there. Well, am I going that way or am I taking a detour that's not going to get me there? Or at least make me show up late. <laughs> right? So following in submission. So confess with your mouth, Jesus your Lord. Truly believe, genuinely believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. Then we go back and, and we start reading about all the wonderful things that God has done for us. And if you go back into Genesis, anybody know how it starts? 
In the beginning, what? God created. School teacher for 26 years. And one of the first things they teach our kids is God didn't do that. Right? That's kind of what they teach. It's all this other stuff that they put together. They call it a theory even then. But God, it wasn't God. Or maybe God made stuff that made our theory work. I don't know how they say it. But it's kind of like it doesn't match the word. And you say, well, Brother Darrell, you know, that's just not scientific. How many of y'all notice that scientists don't always agree? Have you noticed that? And one day they'll tell you this works, and the next day, well, that didn't work. Now this really works. And then the next day they'll tell you, no, no, this works and all that. One thing about God's Word, it's always what? God's Word. He's, he's the inventor. This is the manual or the description of how things happen. And it, the way he talks about it, he spends five days putting stuff together. Like... For example, how many of y'all like the fact that you're able to have something to stand on when you get here? Do y'all like having a floor? Do y'all like the fact that there's gravity? I don't like it when I step on the scales. I don't like gravity at all at that point. But I like being able to stand on something that's not moving. Anybody ever walk, worked offshore and went out on a boat with 12, 15 foot seas? How many of you were glad to get your feet back on solid ground? I remember one trip, it was three days before the rig stopped moving. Now, the rig wasn't moving, but my mind was still moving with the waves as we went out there and stuff. So, God made heavens and the earth. He gave us stars in the sky. He gave all those things. He, and He made things all the way up. And we're going to look at, at some of the things that He did on the, the uh, fourth day. He, he made light and it said, he, God set them in the firmament of heaven and gave light to the earth. How many of y'all like light? Yeah, how could I know if my hair was messed up if I couldn't even see, you know, uh, either one of them. Anyway, uh, he, he made it to rule over the day and, and over the night to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. So how long was the day? There was light, there was darkness, and there was light again. That was a day, wasn't it? So we know how long a day is at that time. And that was the evening and morning of the fourth day. So he had made the land, he would made the, the, the sky, he would made the water, he made all of that kind of stuff. And then he had light to see it all. And then... He speaks this way. Then God said, that was the fourth day, remember, let the water abound with an abundance of the living creatures, let birds fly above the earth and cross the firmament, firmament of the heavens. God created the great sea creatures. How many of y'all like to fish? How many of y'all like to catch those great sea creatures like I catch? Half pound bass. Anyway, uh, Every living thing that moves, and with the waters abounded according to their kind, every winged bird according to its kind. Anybody like duck hunting? Nobody. Back in the old days, 90% would raise them. Men, women, kids. Okay? Uh, every kind. And, and God saw that it was good. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the waters and the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. So what God's done is He's basically started building a place for us. He loved you enough to carefully put everything together. And I didn't go through all of it because we don't have time. We're going to be talking about Eve. She's in the first four chapters. So we're going to move right along if that's okay with y'all. Unless y'all got plenty of time to get to lunch. Y'all get there about 1, 1.30. Y'all be okay? No, we're not going to do that. We're going to hurry through. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind. And kind would be the type. Like a dog would be wolf or uh, the dingo or, or whatever it was. But that kind, chihuahua, whatever goes. Cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth. Cattle were usually, when they go back, the interpreters say that meant domesticatable animals. And the beasts were the undomesticatable animals. Now you might domesticate one wolf in a hundred to a certain point, but in general you don't. And you might find one a cow that you can't get settled down at all, but that's one in a hundred. Generally, you can domesticate those, and that's why we have we don't farm generally wolves, and we do farm with cattle and things like that. So, uh, according to their kind, and so it was. And the Lord made the beast of the earth according to his kind, cattle according to his kind, everything that creeps on the earth. Some walk backwards and are good boiled with potatoes and corn, right? Those things that creep on the earth, huh? Our side, I'm sorry, we left out the lady who likes to go to what's uh, Sabon and get the, the crabs. And they're so cheap. Just $50 a dozen. You know, it's just, 
Anyway, uh, unless it's gone up. It's, then, then God said, let us make, okay, he, by the way, he saw everything was good. Then he said, let us make man in our image. You say our image. Well, that's another whole discussion. We serve one God who shows up as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In fact, if you read the Bible, one of the verses we read this morning, it says there's one Spirit. But the Bible says the Spirit of the Father and the Spirit of the Son. The Bible says there's one Spirit. So guess what? There's one God shows up as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that's as far as I can go in Trinity. Ask me in 80 years, third five to the left, and I'll explain the rest to you. In other words, it's bigger than me. My God is bigger than me. Isn't that great? Smarter than me. Knows a whole lot more than me. Go to Him first. Raven's heard some of my convoluted opinions before and that they, they don't mean anything it's God's word so he said let us make man in our image according to our likeness so made in the likeness of God there are certain attributes we have that are godly uh, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air my buddy Matt loved that verse <laughs> he loved duck hunting and he loved fishing at big lake so he wanted dominion every time he went whether they were this big or this big uh, and over the cattle and over the earth and over every creeper thing on the earth. God made man in his image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. Okay? Who made them male and female? Just hang on to that because scientists don't always agree anymore. Okay? Male and female. He created them. And God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply. What does multiply mean? Dads become dads. Moms become moms. Amen? So this was way back in the very beginning. He, he, he wanted people to become dads and moms. Not everybody. And you read about that. Paul talks about it. some are, are called to be single and some are not. But uh, anyway, continue on. Uh, see, I have given you every herb plant that yields seed which is on the face of the earth and every tree and whose fruit yields seed so that you shall have it for food. When they got here, the trees were already grown, making seed, making some for it to eat. Because when he prepared a place for man to be, guess what he prepared? Everything needed. How old was the tree? About two days. How many rings did it have in it if it was already this big? Another question, did, did Adam have a navel? Didn't need one, did he? Could have put one, and they got, could have put them rings there, but he made them fully grown. Adam didn't come as an infant. He came as a man. And we're going to see that shortly. All right? Uh, after that, he put things into what we call a natural process. Also, to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food, and it was so. They were vegetarians. Isn't that strange? In fact, it wasn't until after Noah's time that they said you can eat meat. And it's a good thing because they'd have cooked all them animals on that ark. They were on it for about a year. Right? But it was okay. And why were they vegetarian? Because the Bible teaches there wasn't a death till sin came on. There was no death till sin came on. Okay? Uh, and I know people would say save the trees. And then the other people would say no, no, no. That's supper. <laughs> you know. Whatever it goes. But anyway, that's how it was at that time. Then God saw everything he had made. And indeed, when he made man, he, he changed it. It wasn't just good. What is it? Very good. It says it in that one that I've got up there now. It's very good. People in modern times like to put man at the bottom. And, and everything else is better. Right? They want to save everything else except man. So we abort, we, 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 we wipe out old folks, or somebody who has a disease, they, they have a, uh, what's that, the euthanasia, right, that they use. That. By the way, it's in a lot of countries now. They don't value that, but God says it's very good, and he made it, and when you see it's very good at the end of making everything else, he made it for who? Man. He gave man dominion, all right? So that's the, the end of chapter 1. Chapter 2, he comes back and he starts explaining how he made man. And we'll look at that now. Some people read the Bible and say, look, he's talked about two different times he made man. No, first time he said making man, now he's telling you how he did it. Okay? Thus the heavens and the earth and the host of them was finished. 
On the seventh day, God rested from His work that He had done. He rested the seventh day for all of His work was done. Now, when God rested, did that mean He quit having the planet spin? No. When He said He rested, He rested from that job. Didn't mean He wasn't doing another job like sustaining. The Bible teaches us that Jesus is the sustainer. And, and people are really concerned that the world won't be sustained because man's messed it up so bad. And so they have their own religion. Who's going to save the world now? It's not Jesus. Who is it? People who don't use plastic straws. Right? That's going to save the world. And, and, and people who uh, don't have a gas hot water heater and all. And it's all good strange. But who is the sustainer that keeps the planet spinning and everything else? God. He's got it set. Now, should we be wasteful? Should we be uh, 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 unresponsible in how we live? Absolutely not. But be careful because man wants to take God's place on sustaining the world. And every 12 years we're going to be gone. So be careful as, as people tell you that stuff. Go back and read what God says. He's the sustainer. He takes and That means he keeps it going. So on the seventh day, he's keeping it going. And he still is. Then God blessed the seventh, uh, seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work and that God created and made. So that's the history of the heavens and the earth, right? Uh, let's go down a little bit and we'll talk about that. The man. Here we go with the man being born. But he wasn't born like you and I were born. He wasn't born of a woman. Look how he was born. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. You go read in, in the book of John chapter 1, it says nothing was created without Christ. That, that hand work done on the earth, guess who was doing it? God the Son. Before He was incarnated, He always was. In fact, it says, in the beginning was the Word, that's Jesus. The Word was with God, the Word was God, nothing was created without Him. So, we know who's doing the, the, the breathing and the, the breath of life. Who is still the life? The way, the truth, and the life. It's still Jesus. So, He's talking about Jesus here. The Lord planted a garden eastward of Eden. What came first? Adam made out of dirt or the Garden of Eden? Let's go back. 2-7. The Lord uh, God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed nostril, uh, life into his nostrils. Verse 8. The Lord planted a garden. Which came first? Adam came first. That will come apparent soon why, why that happened. You'll start to understand the difference between men and women. The world does it, but you might, okay? Especially down here in, in uh, Cajun country. Uh, so the Lord planted the garden in Eden, and he, there he put the man he had formed. And out of the ground God made the trees grow pleasant to the sight. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden. By the way, the tree of life is all the way through the Bible. And you'll read more about it when you get to Revelations. But there's pictures of this tree of life. Also in the midst of the garden, and also was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. How many people like to think they're smarter than others that come around? All of us. Would you agree? All of us like to think that. Right? Some of us, we don't start thinking that until we're 14, 15, or 16, teenagers. And, and some of us takes a long time to realize we're not as smart as we thought we were. Some of us are still learning that lesson. Right? But God he knows all these things. But the, in the midst of the garden, there's these two trees. One is the tree of life in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Then it talks about some boundaries where the, a river went around it and it, it names the different places. I'm going to go past that because y'all want to go to lunch sooner than later. Uh, then he did this. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend it and keep it. This was a rough work. Anybody ever work in a garden? What are problems of working in a garden? Weeds and stuff. There weren't any. It was already grown. They could already go pick stuff and eat it. But there weren't any weeds and thorns and thistles at, at that time. Basically, he had a really tough job. And he says, he told him, uh, And the Lord God commanded of the man, saying, Of every tree in the garden you can eat, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you'll surely die. Okay? Really important that you get that down. He said, Don't what? Eat from it. Okay? Now, how many trees did he say that he could eat from? All the other ones. Which one did he say he could? That one right there. 
How many things would get you kicked out of God's garden, God's best? One. What do you call it when you disobey God? Sin. sin. One sin would get you kicked out of the garden, out of, out of His very best. Here's the great thing. One act of obedience will get you back in. Trust in Jesus. You trust Jesus, you just follow Him where He goes and you're going to be there. One gets us kicked out. It says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us has sinned. Amen? None of us better than anybody else in that. The difference is, some are following Jesus and some are following whatever they think is right. Okay? Uh, he said, you'll surely die. Then he said this, it's not good that man should be alone. I'm sure Adam was thinking the same thing. He looked around and, and, and he, later it says he didn't see anything that, that, that was comparable to him. He says, I'll make him a helper comparable to him. And, and the word is, is help meet in the King James, help meet. And it's not helper like pick up that wrench. <laughs> the, the word is to help meet the, the struggles of the day partner, someone to walk alongside, right? Not the same, but equal. What does the New Testament tell us? Male or female, slave or free, oh, they're same in God's eyes, right? So, we know that. He says, out of the ground the Lord formed every beast of the field and, uh, uh, and of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And y'all have heard me say this before. He wasn't good at it. He, he was born yesterday. You heard people say, I wasn't born yesterday. He was. Right? And, and fully grown. And, and I've said before, what sound does a cow make? Moose. So shouldn't they have called a cow a moose? But he didn't. Right? He, he missed that one. But it was okay with God because that wasn't a sin. He's, it's like watching a kid draw a picture of something and it don't look anything like it. But to them, that's it. So he's, he loves Adam. He made mankind for, for, for love. And so he goes on. And I'm being silly with that in a sense, but God was happy with Adam and, and where he was. He, he saw all those things. He didn't find any helper suitable for him. You can read that in verse 20. So God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. And as he slept, this is the first surgery, right? He took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in his place. Okay? However God had him there, and with God's anesthesia of the day, that, that's what took place from his side. In fact, some of the interpretation will say from his side, but we, we say the rib. <coughs> then the rib from which the Lord had taken it, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And then we have the first wedding of mankind. And here are the vows. These are the only wedding vows in the Bible, by the way. <coughs> and Adam said... And I, I could probably put it in there very excitedly. Because this was the most beautiful woman on the face of the earth. She was also the, uh, she was the only one. But still, this, this was it. <coughs> this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And people have poetically wrote down, not from the feet where he would walk, or not from the head where he would She'd pound on his head, but from the side where she would walk with him. And I, I think that pretty much lines up with Scripture. <coughs> Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall be one flesh. So, now we have man and woman. That's really what it takes. That's kind of the kit to get a mom, isn't it? Would you agree with that? So God had it set up so that could happen. Then we get this. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. Why? They were innocent. They're man and wife. But they're innocent. You ever see babies running around? You're kind of worried. Give them some clothes on and all that. They're not worried about it, are they? Right? They're in that state of innocence, and they're in that state of, of uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, husband and wife. Chapter 3. We got through 2 pretty quick, didn't we? This was basically heaven. This was everything that they needed for, for the very best. They didn't have to weed the garden. They just go anywhere and pick what they wanted to eat, right? They had each other. They had all these animals. There's no, no danger. The animals are not 
killing anything. They're eating plants too. All of those things. And you, you can go read a lot more about that in the Bible that explains it a, a little more and a little more in depth. But anyway, we get to chapter 3 and we get something new called temptation. Right? We get to something new called temptation. God doesn't tempt anybody. He'll test us, but He doesn't tempt us. Now, what's the difference? A test is wanting people to move forward, move up. A tempt is wanting people to fail. Does that, does that make sense? Uh, I shared the other morning at the men's breakfast that uh, I, I can remember being a teacher. I've given many tests, and being a teacher, I had to take a lot of tests to be a teacher. But at, at seminary, it was different because 80 people in a room... And you had to study a big old bunch of information, all that kind of thing. And, and so I'm dread. And at that moment, the professor is my enemy. You know, all that studying you'd done the night before, nobody else crammed before the exam, did they? Y'all started way early and you were ready on the day. Anyway, and, and so, and then he did something amazing. He knelt down behind the front. And on his knees, he prayed for us to have recall and to move forward. He prayed with compassion, knowing the work that he took and all those other kind of things. I hadn't had teachers do that for me before. But that's, that's the difference between the kind of testing God does. He's rooting for you. And, and the other side is the way the devil does is to tempt you. So we get this, this first temptation in the garden. It says, now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field. We know the serpent has Satan working through him. And remember, there's no carnivores. There's nothing dangerous in the garden. So a serpent's just another animal. There's nothing uh, in, in between them bad at this point. Uh, Eve didn't freak out when, the, when she saw the snake. So he was more cunning than any beast of the garden that the Lord had made. And he said, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of the garden? There's a question mark at the end. What's he questioning? God's word. Right? He's questioning God's word. And the woman said, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but... Of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat, you shall not touch it, lest you die. Okay. Did anybody see a problem the way she described that? What did God say not to do? Don't eat. What did she add to it? Don't touch. I kind of wonder if Adam, because remember, she didn't get the word from God. Adam got the word from God. But he doesn't want her in danger. That's his best girl, his only girl, the only girl in the whole world. Does he want anything bad to happen to her? You think he went a little further? Maybe. This is just speculation, so know that. But he might have went further and said, don't go near that tree. Right? Don't touch, don't do nothing. But what does the Bible say about not taking away from the Word of God and don't add to the Word of God? Because that, that starts putting a, a what? It's not good enough if you have to add to it. Right? And take away something you don't agree about. Anyway, it changes the word. It changes the, the thing. If you had a check for $1,000 and somebody said, Oh, I'm going to add a decimal right here after the one. Did it change the check? Yeah, you could cash it now if I wrote it to you. <laughs> right? It made it a whole lot less, didn't it? So adding to diminishes. It doesn't help it. And it creates doubt. Did you see that? And, and, and remember, that was before the garden. Eve made in the garden. Ladies, do you ever wonder about guys that will get up out of a bed at 4 o'clock in the morning on their day off and get their shotgun? It's raining, pouring outside, and they're maybe freezing a little bit. And they're excited. And they dress in, in expensive clothes that they don't want anybody to see because they're camouflaged. And they go out and into the mosquitoes. And they shoot at duckies. Do y'all get a little concerned about people that just have no more sense than that? Why would they do that when you've got a nice warm house, a TV, someone who loves you, an air conditioner, heater, or whatever, a screen door to keep the mosquitoes out? Why would you do that? But remember, where was Adam made? He was made, then what was made? The garden. He was made in the what? the wild, in the, in the dirt, from the dirt. And, and then he's put in the garden. Where was Eve made? In the garden. What does a garden kind of say to you? Things are organized. They're where they're supposed to be. They're how they're supposed to be. Right? Is there a difference between men and women? Praise God, yes. <laughs> Amen? Like Adam. Bone to my bone, flesh to my flesh. He's excited. 
And we should be excited about those wonderful differences. But anyway, they're there. And then she's already got her adding. She started off the defensive against. She had, she had the word. And he said, well, think about it this way. And she did. And she said, then the serpent said to her. And he's still calling her woman, by the way. You will not surely die. Now, he's not only got her questioning God's word, he's absolutely lying to her. And she's got a choice now. They've been given dominion over the world, right? And as long as they're listening to God, they're doing the right thing. But when they say, I'm not going to listen to you anymore, I'm going to listen to him, what happened all of a sudden? Who has dominion over the world now? I mean, the agents of the world, Adam and Eve, are doing their thing and, and listening to God, doing it God's way. And, and so God's running things. Now, God still can, but He allows Satan to have a, a certain amount of power. And, and guess what the Bible calls Him now? The Prince of the Power of the Air. Can you notice around the world Satan has a lot of power? He doesn't rule the heavens. God does. And, he, and, and God can step in anytime He wants. And he, he holds Him back. Go read the book of Job and all that. But... She just gave dominion to Satan when she starts doing it his way. How did he get her to do it? He questioned the Word. What if you don't know the Word? You'll come to some bad assumptions and, and bad things happen from that. Right? So he says, you'll not surely die. For God knows in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good from evil. Brother Darrell, I thought this was Mother's Day. Hang with me. We're not there yet. Okay? Uh, You'll be like God. So another what? Incentive to do this. First it was the forbidden fruit. Gosh, I wonder why God was holding out on me not let me eat that thing. It sure looks good, right? And now it's, and, and God don't want you as smart as Him. And yet God says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind to get how? Smart like Him instead of smart like the world. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, oh no, what does she trust? She trusted her eyes. She didn't trust God. Young ladies, when you're looking for a husband, don't just trust your eyes. <laughs> How many of the other ladies don't look at your husband and say this, but you're saying amen? Right? Be careful. What looks good may not be good at all. What did Garth Brooks used to say? Sometimes I thank God for unanswered prayers. He didn't get the girl he thought was the best. And he sees her now and he says, thank you, God. <laughs> Somebody else got stuck with her. Right? <laughs> But, but listen, be careful. Don't trust your eyes. They will. And guys, you may not know it, but the, the most addictive thing for men is pornography. Don't trust your eyes. Don't let them go where they don't need to go. Right? You'll, you'll trade something good for something horrible and a, and a fantasy in itself. So be careful with the eyes. A tree desirable to make one wise. So she took the fruit and ate. Who ate it first? Eve. Eve. Usually Raylan is louder at that point. You're learning. It's a good job. Hey, good job, Lorraine. Uh, she also gave to her husband, and he ate. Did he argue like Eve did? No. Okay, dear. Now, some people have, have thought that this might be he saw his precious wife step down away from God. And he stepped down with it. But the truth is, both of them sinned. And they, they will use that to say, man stepped down in sin. And his, the, the, the mankind called the bride of Christ. And the groom stepped down with them. But Jesus didn't come in sin, did he? He came to the earth. He stepped down for us. He res came to rescue us. But he didn't sin. Adam stepped down in, in sin. And by the way, they don't call it the sin of Eve in the rest of the Bible. They call it the sin of what? Adam, he was responsible, right? And he certainly didn't put up any fight, did he? Then both of their eyes were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves covering. They didn't drop dead, but something died right then. What died right then? Innocence was gone. Wasn't two babies anymore. And, and who else was on the earth that would see them? So now there's an issue between a man and his wife. The intimacy is gone that, that was there before. And, and I tell you, it goes all the way to the New Testament where, 
the husband and wife have to be told, don't keep yourself from one another. Don't take something, but, but don't, don't keep yourself from one another. It tells you that over in... Uh, well, I've got the verse here. Let's see. But we're not going to go too deep into that. But, but the intimacy was gone. It's, it's crazy how it yeah, happened. So, what happened then? Then they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Adam and his wife hid themselves in the presence from the Lord among the trees. And God said, where are you? Does God know where he is? How many of y'all got kids and, and, and they're hiding behind a broomstick so you can't see them? And you say, oh, where's my little angel? And what does your little angel do? Giggles. Because you can't see them behind that broomstick. Of course you can. But you play the game, don't you? Why did God say, where are you? Because he's asking him a lot more than his location. Something has changed big time, right? And, and uh, they heard God walking. Could God walk silent if he wanted to? Did you know that God would have had to judge them in their sin right then if they'd have seen him at that time? Before he, they were sinners, they could communicate different. But now... He had to walk that way. They hid. All that's going on. He, he said, I heard your voice in the, gar in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. Right? And he said, who told you you were naked? He knows the innocence is gone. Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you not to eat? Remember that intimacy that's gone now between the man and the woman? Not totally, but it's just... There's no more trust. Once sin is in the world, somebody lied to you. Somebody uh, do the wrong things. If they'll do it with somebody else, they'll do it to you. You know, all those kind of things. The trust is broken. Right? And so, the, uh, what did he do? He says, have you eaten what you shouldn't eat? And Adam quickly, being the big strong man that he is, says, the woman whom you gave me, <laughs> gave me the fruit and I ate. Who did he blame? Now Eve has... Muffler burns from the bus she just got thrown up, right? Big upstanding man, and, and that's, that's what happened. Uh, and the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you've done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. And he did, she fought a little bit. Adam certainly didn't. So the Lord starts saying something. He says to the serpent, Because you've done this, you're cursed more than the cattle, more than the beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go. You shall eat dust all the days of your life. And almost every southern boy who had a car says, You're going to eat my dust now. Right? So now you know where they got that from. And then verse 15 comes. Hang on to this verse. Mark it. Highlight it. Whatever you do. Listen to this verse. And I will put an enmity. He's talking to the serpent. Between you, he's talking to the devil basically, in, 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 between you and the woman, between your seed and her, what's that word? Seed. What, what's the first letter on it? Capitalize. And by the way, apparently the devil didn't want me to get that one out because the computer went crazy. But that's verse 15 in chapter 3. Hang on to that. Okay? Now, it's capitalized. Why is it capitalized? What, what do many translations do that they capitalize? Something like him or he or, or uh, something like that. Who is it talking about when they capitalize it in the middle of a sentence? God. Well, who is the seed of God the Father? God the Son. And it's going to be the seed of a woman. And this seed of the woman is promised that God's given away to come back after the sin has gotten them kicked out. Now, the rescuer is not coming from the man. It's come from the what? Woman. Mary was the what? Mother of Jesus, even though he already was. He was incarnated through her. Dad was God, but she was the one that it was incarnated in. That, that was his mom. Right? So, the seed of the woman. This is the good news that's going to happen. And here's, here's how we know he wins. He, capital H, will bruise... Your head talking to the devil, to the serpent, and you shall bruise his heel. Satan thought he won when Jesus was crucified on the cross. Did he win? No, he absolutely lost. He lost you if you're saved that day. Right? He lost you if you've made Jesus your Lord that day. 
Then he goes on and he says to the woman, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and, and your... Uh, in your conception, in pain, you shall bring forth children. Your desire will be for your husband. He'll rule over you. Have you ever noticed there's a conflict between men and women sometimes? Don't look at your husband or wife when you answer this. Okay? Just look at me. Keep you out of trouble. Right? Does it happen that we don't always agree with our spouse? And we start looking for uh, more power to get our way and all that. That's the sin in us. We're not working as partners. We're not help me and, and, and that anymore. We're, we're now what? And yet it's much better to be together. It's not good for a man to be alone. But that's going on. One more time. Who was going to be the answer? The seed of the woman. She hadn't had any kids yet. But she will. Now that's good news for Eve because what was supposed to happen to her when she ate from the fruit? She was supposed to die. But she's going to have children. But things did die. Right? Things did die. He got to the man, he says, now, both thorns and thistles, it'll be for you. You go out and provide a living, but it ain't going to be easy. It's not this garden thing anymore. And he, he, all, that thing, all that happened because man went against God. So when all the curses are given, the punishment's given, and all the, the uh, telling of the future's done, Adam does something interesting. Maybe. Verse 20. Here it comes. Uh, Adam called his wife Eve, and she now has a name. What does the name mean? The mother of all living. Does he love his wife? Does he recognize? And by the way, if she hadn't had children that eventually came to Jesus, where would we all be? Does God honor women? When people tell you, oh, that Christian stuff, they don't, they don't honor women. How much honor did God give women when he said the answer is going to come through the mom? Right? What else is interesting is it says seed, and if, uh, I'm not going to teach biology and all, but seed in the Bible were usually referred to the male contribution. She didn't have a male. It's going to be her seed. That means what kind of birth did it have to be if it only came from the woman? Virgin birth. Wow, that explains a lot, doesn't it? That, that was going to be coming about. Something else that, that, that happens here. One was... God said, Behold, the man's become like one of us to know good and evil. Now, lest we put out our hand and take away the tree of life, he'll eat and live forever. Can you imagine if this world went on forever like it's going right now? Is it getting better? More people turning to God now? I know there's a few, but I'm talking about more in, in percentages or, or more laughing at God. Which do you see? Say, he don't know what he's talking about. Same thing Satan said. Let's see. I wonder who they're listening to. Right? All of those things. And in fact, at one point, if you remember Noah, it got that way. People were dreaming up ways to go against God. They had to use a vast imagination to come up with new ways to do evil against God. That's not happening today, is it? Absolutely it is. How can we dishonor God? You know, we don't know. What's a woman? People with doctor's degree. You know, crazy stuff, right? We, we don't know those things anymore. We can't answer or somebody might fuss at us or, or something going on. Okay, so that's going on. He says, so he stopped it in Noah's day with the flood. And one day he's going to stop it again. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the Garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So the ground is cursed. Your body's made of dirt. You're not going to get to heaven in this body. It's cursed. And we spoke yesterday at, at a, uh, the funeral of a precious individual that, that you're not going to get to heaven in that body. The ground is now cursed. Okay? But he's going to give you a body that will last forever later. Alright? So he, he drove the man out. Alright? Uh, one more thing I wanted to be sure that we had. Okay. Chapter 4 real quick. Because we hadn't got her to be a mom yet, have we? Now Adam knew his Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, and she says, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Now she's out of the garden, but she's still in relationship with God. Do you see that? He's given her hope, a promise that there's the deliverers coming, and she's believing in that promise. And she's still in relationship with the Lord. And who did she give credit to? Now that she's a mom. And what does she think of Cain when he's a baby? 
Is there any more beautiful baby on the earth than the one that you're holding? So that's what she thinks. And maybe this is the seed. She bore again, and this time her brother Abel, and now Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. In the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of fruit of the ground of the Lord. Abel also brought a firstling of the flock and their fat, and the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain, and he was very angry, and his countenance fell. Got an attitude, is what it meant. Countenance fell, bad attitude. How many of you raise kids and you know what a bad attitude is? You can see it when it happens. You know what I'm talking about. Moms, uh, especially. Okay? Uh, so the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your countenance falling? If you do well, you'll be accepted. He said, If you do not do well, sin lies at the door, and your its desire is for you, but you shall rule over it. Now, what does that mean? What did they bring? Well, one brought grain, Cain, he was a tiller of the soil, and one brought what? Firstling of the flock, an, an animal, a live animal. What was the penalty for sin? Death. Still is. And, and so, if, if we didn't cover that verse, but uh, before, whenever they realized they were naked, and they did the, the fig leaves. Are fig leaves good covering on bare skin? And most of you can answer that real quick if you've ever picked figs. They're itchy and they don't last long. But he, he gave animal skin. What had to happen to the animal to give up its skin? To clothe? Death. So immediately there was a death. Death entered now. It's now on, on the world, right? And, and Hebrews tells us the difference between a grain offering and a, and a sin offering, uh, an atoning offering, one that pays our price. It's temporary with animals, but it, had to, it required a death. Without the shedding of blood, the Bible says, that the, it, it, let, me, let me find it here, Hebrews 9.22. In fact, the law requires that nearly everything must be cleansed with blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. It doesn't have an atoning factor. And, and, and you can picture cases, this is good stuff, I grew it. <laughs> right? But it, it, it wouldn't change anything, there was no bloodshed. And Abel brought his, and he says, just do the right thing, Cain, and everything's fine. Well, what did Cain do? He got mad at who? Not, not at God. Who did he get mad at? His brother. And what did he do? He killed him. What a horrible thing. A little later, wonderfully, and, and you, you can't imagine what, what all she went through to get there, but she had another son, didn't she? And his name was Seth. You find him. Okay. Adam knew his, his wife again and she bore a son named Seth. For God had, has appointed another seed for me instead of Abel whom Cain killed. So to, to wrap that up, she had another son. Guess what? He's in the seed line. If you trace Jesus' uh, back all the way to Adam, he goes through Seth. It goes through Noah since him, he was the only patriarch that got on the ark, right? And uh, it goes through uh, uh, Shem, his son. That's where we get the name Semite for the Jewish people. And all the way down through, through David, all the way went to get to Mary. Why, not, why didn't I say Joseph? Mary was a virgin. Right? So through a mom, one more time, God brought that. What did, what did Eve go through that moms go through? One, was she perfect? No. Did she need a Savior? She absolutely did. Okay? So that's every person, right? But what did she have? She had childbirth. And it's amazing. My mom had four kids within six years, and she kept having them. Why? They tell me it's painful. I haven't done it. Because, <laughs> have a witness, huh? Okay. But why? And the Bible tells about that in the book of John, that, that the pain is there, but the joy of that new life, it, it makes up for it. It's, it's amazing how that goes. And so, she experienced a lot of pain, didn't she? Watching one son kill another son. Can you imagine? The more you love, the more you hurt. Amen? Someone who's well loved, there's a lot more hurt out there because it goes. And yet, you're so thankful for, for that person, you know, and, and what's going on. So she went through all of that pain. Does that sound like moms you know? And still kept on loving and still kept on wanting the best and, and, and hurt from even when they were grown and all of that kind of stuff. 
Right? And what did she say when she said, had, uh, had said, For God has appointed another seed for me instead of Abel, whom Cain killed. Who did she give credit to? Back to God. She's still in a relationship with God. There wasn't any death before sin. And you can imagine living with that. Do we feel guilty at misleading our kids? We tried to do our best when we were coming up, but sometimes we didn't do it well. How many parents can agree with that? And I guarantee you, we can't. Listen, give the guilt to, to God. Say, God, I'm doing my best. Help me do better. <laughs> right? And don't live in it. But still, can you imagine how she got through that? Only with her relationship with God. Only with the hope for the future that God said. So, moms are human. Moms aren't perfect. But I can tell you, without them, where would we be? Any of us. Do they deserve honor? What does the Bible say? Honor your father and mother. Amen? And so today we come and we say, thank you, moms. We say, thank you, mom. And we say, thank you, Lord, for making a way for us to be saved. And thank you for doing it the perfect way through a mom. Right? Through a mom. That seed of the woman that we talked about. If you've never made Jesus your Lord of your life, please do. The wages of sin is death. And life outside of the garden, outside of God's best, is not pleasant. There's death out here. Amen? It wouldn't be here if man hadn't sinned, but man did. And yet God in that day was still making a way for man to come back into that perfect existence with Him. We call it heaven, don't we? Right? And did, did, did woman have a big part in that? Absolutely, both ways, right? Sin, but also what? Faithful, still faithful. Even when we see about our last with Seth there, giving honor and glory to who? To God. So moms, we celebrate you, and we celebrate the God that made you and, and gave us to you. And mom, if you're watch this, hi, happy Mother's Day, right? If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I pray you do. I don't, I'm not here to steer anybody or anything else. I just want to tell you the truth and tell you that's the option that's available because of what God did. And He started way back making sure it was clear to us and available to us. Amen? Let's go to the Lord in prayer.